SHOT Show 2016 at the Kershaw Zero Tolerance booth. And meeting up with Jim once again. Hey. How you doing, brother? I'm good. Good, good to see you. See. Now, uh, it's been a little while, obviously. Um, yeah. We got a little caught up here as we were doing the juggle around with some of the new product. And uh, once, you know, just to mention, uh, happy anniversary on the 10th anniversary of Zero Tolerance. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank Nothing you. like some guys juggling stuff behind you, right? It's always fun. Now, uh, Jack Igarashi uh, mentioned that there's the, uh, he's, he's very proud of the fact that, uh, and he announced that uh, Zero Challenge will be providing the knife for the Japanese Special Forces for the Defense uh, Ministry. Very cool. He's very happy with that, very happy, and, uh, and, and large, large kudos to you guys. And of course, that's a part of the uh, blending, of you, if you will, with, uh, with uh, Ernie Emerson. And, yeah. uh, so I know he's going to be very stoked about that as well. Good to hear that. It's always it's always good for it to come back full circle. Yeah. So uh, with that in mind, and yeah. we've got a lot of product to talk about that's new for 2016. Yeah. I'm going to just hand it off to you with uh, to to explain what we've got that's new. Okay. So kind of broken up the product into what I think are some kind of basic groups that we've got here today. So these are kind of what I would call economical utility. So I'm just going to take them one at a time real quick. This is a new design. It's called the Fatback. It's got a nice, nice pointed blade. Uh, it's got a, a nylon handle with a faux G10 texture. Some nice grooves in here to give it a good solid grip. It's about a three and a half inch blade. Again, that texture on the back. Uh, reversible deep carry pocket clip. Black oxide blade, HCR 13 MOV. And a speed safe assisted opening mechanism. So, one of the great things about this knife and that this, is that this is a 39.99 MSRP. So, a lot of bang for your buck, a lot of utility in this knife. Just really cool. Very nice, liner lock. Liner lock, that's okay. right, yeah. Very good. So next we have the 1965 Rove. So this is a uh, another knife of a similar construction, but very different design as you can see. A little more of a working style blade. Nice belly to that blade. Um, nice high hollow grind. Again, nylon handles with a uh, with a nice textured patch on here as well. Decorative hardware gives a little bit of a bling. Kind of an elegant look on the on the uh, the scales there, or the handles. Yeah. Yep, we'll try to make them all a little different. So again, a little more texture on the back. Reversible pocket clip. Um, HCR 13 MOV blade. And nice, nice stout speed safe assisted opening. What this was one, the MSR, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, no. no I was gonna ask what the MSRP, but I think you were gonna go right into <laughs> it, so. MSRP of $29.99 on this one. So, really great price for this knife. You're getting a lot of, uh, of blade or tool for the retail price there. I mean, that's just and, that, and that's really kind of the theme of this group of knives that we're looking at. Um, this is a design by Todd Rexford. Uh, again, nice new piece for this year. This one is called the Entropy. So you can see this is still a drop point style blade, but it's very aggressive. It's got that long, sleek profile. We've got a nice textured handle. Again, that, that nylon handle. Um, deep carry pocket clip, totally reversible. And then something that's been kind of a cool theme for us on a number of our knives this year is that we're doing hints of color. <laughs> we're not getting real colorful. I mean, it's just we we do what the customer wants. The customer often wants something that's actually fairly fairly clean, fairly pulled back. So we're adding these kind of little details to make it to make the knife pop a little bit. And that's more Stand of a subdued orange. It's not a bright, uh, right. blind me orange. Yeah, almost kind of a burnt orange. Yeah. So. This knife also has an MSRP of $39.99. Next up, this is a really cool knife. Again, similar construction, but you can see what a great design this is. This is called the Portal. It's got a real heavy texture on here on these, on these uh, molded nylon scales. And it's got these four grooves that run down it in a nice flowing pattern and are carried onto the blade as well in this, in this cold forged texture on the blade. Fluid lines. Yeah, really smooth, really flowing. Um, great construction. Again, HCR 13 MOV steel, fully stone washed. Black injection molded nylon handles, reversible pocket clip, 
speed safe assisted opening and an MSRP of $29.99. Next up we have a knife called the Grinder, model 1319. Um, again, this one's got a 4CR14 blade, bead blast finish, and it's got that really, it's really nice working blade. It's not quite a Warncliffe, but that tip really drops down. Very warncliffe light. Great for opening boxes, great for cutting cardboard. And a, and a sweeping edge as well. Right. Very nice. Good for like rocking, if you were going to be doing some yeah. small work where you're rocking the blade over yeah. something multiple times. Kind of the best of both worlds, really. Um, again, nylon scales. Nice grippy texture. I don't even feel that yeah. on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then if you notice on the back of the blade, you've got full jimping all the way along here, and it's quite grippy. And you can work your, your thumb or your finger all the way up on that for that fine-tuned work. I don't want to rock no, it on exactly, your pad. But, exactly. And that's the intention, right? That's the intention, yep. Beautiful. Yeah, so again, MSRP of $29.99 on this one. Then finally, something a little different in this grouping. This knife's called the Barge. So we've got, again, almost a Warncliffe blade. Um, real drop tip. We've got a nylon handle with a faux G10 texture and a little bit of simulated machining in it. Um, it's a manual action knife with thumb studs. Stainless steel frame lock. Lots of hardware, real beefy construction. And then kind of the elephant in the room on this knife is this big steel backspacer. So this is meant to be an integrated pry bar. Something we run into a lot, with, particularly with utility knives like this, we get people that pry with the tip of the blade and they break them and it becomes a problem you have to fix it or replace it and so we've just built in this big pry bar in here you can see how beefy that is it's over a quarter inch thick at the back um, really is, nice little design and that's part of the backspacer that is actually integral with the backspacer yep. okay so and so if you were to damage that I mean I, I frankly don't see how you could but if you were to damage <laughs> it you could switch it out you could replace that yeah I mean a few damages I think <laughs> you've, you've done well yeah yeah but uh, but yeah, so and it's got this lanyard loop that you could also stick wire in and bend it. That was the actual original intention. Um, Very utilitarian. Yeah, great knife. MSRP of 35 bucks, which really for all that steel is a, is a nice price. And out of this pri uh, this this uh, price range, if you will, or this series that we're talking, it's not really a series, but this grouping yeah. that we're talking about today, it's the only frame lock, correct? Um, out of this group, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Very good. Now, continuing with the uh, the new series for 2016. Okay. These are some of the larger knives in the series. So, a little bit of variety here. So again, I'll start with the first one here on the top. This is a new Rick Hinder design. It's called the Ferre, uh, model 1557Ti. Um, from the name, you'd notice that this has a nice gray titanium coating over the over most of the knife. Um, 8CR13 MOV blade, speed safe assisted opening. Um, and that back of the blade there isn't just for looks. It's again, like some of the other knives you've seen, this is a nice place to rest your thumb, rest your forefinger for detailed work. Um, so a really nice, fun, functional blade. For Rick, it's kind of a departure because it's a real long, slim design, really something different. Different kind of flat finger grooves, uh, flat butt. It's a steel frame lock on this knife, again with that nice gray coating. Hinder lock bar stabilizer. A little more of a hinderer style of a clip. It's actually sitting down in a recess like, like you would find on an XM18 as well. So to reverse the clip, you would take off this little filler plate on the front and screw the clip on over here. And the part of the fun, fun of this knife is that this is meant to, these, these filler plates are meant to be the same size as the ones that you can buy from either Rick or from Steel Flame. So if you choose to, you could actually upgrade this filler plate and put something else in there. If not, you get this nice little Kershaw one that comes with a knife. So you could, uh, in essence, uh, well, it's not really a, a customization, but you can add some custom-like features. You could pimp your knife. Pimp your knife. Well, they, I'm glad you said it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, really cool piece. Uh, MSRP of $59.99 on this one. Still highly reasonable. Very reasonable. So, next up, this is a big fella. Three and a half inch blade, big beefy frame. This is called the Identity, model 1995. So, big solid blade, uh, steel handle, 
Um, this has a, a molded nylon inlay with what I've been referring to as a vertigo pattern. It's kind of a kind of a concentric circular texture pattern. Um, cool thing about this knife is that pattern continues on the back. It's actually cold forged into the back of the handle. So into that steel frame lock you get that pattern as well. And it's really quite grippy as well. Stu, so you might want to feel that. Oh, that is nice. So, speed safe assisted opening. Um, nice beefy knife. And a $39.99 MSRP on that one. Also got a deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. And this is something a number of these knives have this year. It's kind of a fun little, kind of mini pocket clip. Right, a little more right. understated. Yeah, and, and uh, that, would, that would rest so deeply in your pocket. Yeah. And continuing with this general grouping, yeah. we've got the Emerson. Yep. I had this. to jump in on that. Yeah, exactly. So this is a new addition to our Emerson Designs lineup. Um, this is the CQC 9K. So those of you who are Emersons might look at that and go, yeah, you know, that feels familiar. That feels kind of like some of the more popular Emerson designs we've seen out there. Um, we think this knife's going to do real well. It's a nice big piece. Um, G10 front handle, HCR 14 MOV blade. Um, another cool feature is actually it has the wave shape feature like the majority of Emerson knives do now. But when you get that blade open, it hides up in the handle. It's kind of a sleek look. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, and that's an unusual, an unusual aspect. Yeah. So the wave feature does completely conceal. Well, I don't want to say conceal. Well, it does conceal. Yeah, it conceals in the handle. Blade uh, wave feature locks away underneath the handle, under the, underneath the scale. Very nice. So then we have a... Uh, Go ahead. We have a steel frame lock. We have a, uh, have a standard Emerson style pocket clip with the skull logo on it. It's oh, reversible it's to the front. Um, yeah, so really nice big solid knife here. MSRP of $69.99 on this one. $70 Emerson, go figure. That's it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm last of this lineup of big knives. We have the, uh, the 2200 grid, um, HCR 13 MOV blade. You can see it's a really sleek, flowing look. Um, we've got steel handles with a gray titanium coating. These have a really nice chamfer on these edges. It makes it feel a lot more rounded. And this knife is actually, for being very big, the 3.7 inch blade. It's very slim. I was going to just, I just was just noting on the, the back of the of the blade, the spine of the blade, it is a very thin blade. But overall, yeah. this whole profile is very narrow. And, and, yeah. and, and, but you've got it rounded on the edges, uh, yeah. or, or tapered at the edges, so it just fit really smoothly in the hand. And yeah. May I? Yeah, please. Thank you. It fits very well in the hand. You don't get the biting of right. the edges of the handles or the scales. Yeah. Yeah, you just don't get it. You, you squeeze down on that, and you don't get the typical biting that you would on a narrow, a narrow knife or a narrow profiled knife. Yeah. Is so, that assisted opening? It is. Yep. Speed tape assisted, uh, stainless steel frame lock, deep carry pocket clip, and an MSRP of forty nine ninety nine on that one. Under fifty bucks. Well, right at it. Close enough. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Now, Jim, I don't know about those elves at uh, Kershaw and Zero Tolerance, but I think somebody waved the magic wand, and uh, you've uh, mysteriously switched your uh, tire. I like it. I like how you do that. I wish I could do it. It's almost a Superman thing. Every good diva needs a wardrobe change, too. Now, we've got uh, Les George over there. Yeah, the mad dog. The mad dog, Les George. Yeah, yeah. Okay, keeping an eye on everybody. I think he waved the magic wand. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. So we're continuing so, with the, uh, the the lineup the, for yeah. the new stuff for 2016. Yeah, and it's appropriate that Les George just walked by because actually all these new knives that we're looking at are designs by Les George. That was very mysterious, wasn't it? Yeah. How that yeah. Weird how that happens. <laughs> so we have four new designs in the Kershaw lineup this year that Les George has designed. The cool thing is that they all have a little bit of a familiar, a little bit of a family feel, but they all are quite different. So I want to start here with. 
first one here. I'm a, this is the Pico. So this is just under a three inch blade. <coughs> it has a two tone finish on it. It's got stone wash on the on the grinds, it's satin on the flats. Bead blasted stainless steel handles. Uh, it's got it's got silver hardware with a nice decorative pivot. Again, we go to stainless steel frame lock on the back. Uh, reversible deep carry pocket clip and HCR 13 MOV blade. And again, this knife is speed safe assisted. It's got a real nice pop to it. MSRP of $44.99. So if you're used to looking at Les's customs, that's a really attractive price. <laughs> I'll say. May I? Yeah, please. Now, uh, I'm just noticing from you know an end user standpoint, you've got the uh, the edges of the uh, the uh, the scales or the edges of the handle yeah. are just slightly rounded. Again, you know, giving it that uh, comfortable texture, that comfortable feel. Right. We've got the jimping on the back, uh, just above the pivot point on the blade. Yep. Got some really nice, uh, if, if jimping is the right word for that, on the back spacer. Yeah, and, and for the viewers out there, that back spacer is actually a 3D printed part. Oh. Um, so it's it will be it will be much nicer looking in production. Okay, very good. 3D printer, so basically yeah. we're talking about the elves at Kershaw working on this again. Yeah, so. Very nice. And you did say it's speed assisted, correct? It is, yeah. Yeah, it pops out really nice. Not too hard, especially on a small, small blade knife like this. Yeah. Beautiful, Jim. Okay. So next up is a knife called the Weston. Oop, I'm gonna smash right into the table. There we go. Using the glass breaking feature, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. So the Weston has a full stone wash blade with kind of a bayonet look. Um, Les is into a lot of military knives as a former EOD tech, so you see some of those influences in his design. So kind of that nice long three and a, three and a half inch spear point blade. Um, it's going to have a nylon scale on here with a faux G10 texture and some cool machine, some cool uh, molded machining patterns that Les came up with. Um, again, we have a stainless steel frame lock, reversible deep carry pocket clip and an 8CR13 MOV blade, and uh, like the previous knife, this knife also is assisted opening, so real comfortable. Um, strikes a nice balance, got a good pop. It's not like it's hard to open either. So, and this one will have an MSRP of $49.99, being a little bit bigger. Still, I mean, highly reasonable for a less, one of less knives. Exactly. And that's something we've run into a lot, is you'll even find some of the custom guys that that say, hey, you know, I've, I've got these great customs that cost me $500, $700. I like having a version of it that I can pick up for a street price of like 40 bucks, 30 yeah. bucks, and I don't have to worry about it. Right. If you lose it, you break it, it's uh, no tears falling over that. Exactly. Well, not many. Exactly. So this is the next one up here. This is called the Valmara. Again, this is based, this is based on one of Les's customs. So it's going to have a full stone wash blade again with a really nice recurve. This really is probably the, the sexiest of these knives. Got a real nice curvature to it overall. Comfortable handles. A um, little bit thicker because it's got a nice radius to these handles. So this is going to be an injection molded handle on this one again. So a glass filled nylon with a nice faux G10 texture to it. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, thick liners on this one. We didn't want to go wimpy on it because less of these knives are known for being tough. Um, Again, cool backspacer on it. And I believe that one also is a 3D printed, so unfortunately, you're not getting quite the full effect. And then right. if you look- They're definitely close enough, uh, you know, to, to have an idea of what we're looking at, size-wise, yeah. dimensions, yeah. And, and feel. Yep. Yeah, this so, is- uh, So if you like a knife that's a little more hand-filling, this is probably the one for you. Um, and once again, reversible deep carry clip, that was big for less. Um, and nylon scale on the back and HCR 13 MOV. And this one is an MSRP of $39.99, so even a few bucks cheaper. And then finally we have a knife called the Spline. So this is another one that we think is going to be real popular because it's just a nice size. It's a three inch blade. Um, we have a full black wash finish on the blade and handles. Um, a bit more of a curvy blade you can see there. Um, the decorative pivot hardware that you see on several of these. Um, cool backspacer with a nice texture on it. it. Gives you a little bit of grip. 
And on the back of this one, we've got a couple cool features. We have a steel frame lock again, reversible deep carry clip, HCR 13 MOV blade, and we have what Les has been calling the beer tab um, <laughs> over travel stop. Beer tab over travel stop. So, <laughs> so this is keeping you from overextending that lock bar, but it, instead of being over here like a hinderer one, this one right. goes around the pivot. Okay. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like the pop top on a beer can. So. Certainly does. And the, uh, the, the black stone wash, you know, if I might say, you don't have to carry this knife in your pocket for a year to get that look. You can get it right out of the box. Exactly, exactly. We compare it almost to a kind of worn pair of jeans. Yeah, yeah. Speaking speaking of a worn pair of jeans. You do uh, that. <laughs> real, real, real worn pair. How you doing, Ray? Hey, pretty good. Good to see you, How's brother. Going? Oh, absolutely. Just wrapping up on the uh, beer tap pole, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, we know you've got a few of those going. Oh, no, of course. I we know you got a few of those going. Of course, no such thing as beer tabs anymore. But, oh, no. But you can recall. Yeah. High school time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That long time. High school time a long time ago. Well, but still rememberable. Yeah. Beer tab pool. Yeah, those are pretty uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. Okay. Listen, Rick, take care, brother. It was yeah, good to see you. Have a yeah. safe trip home, okay? All right. Thanks, bud. Okay. See ya. Okay. Okay, Jim. Those, those subtle interruptions, you know, there's always a reason for them, right? Let's see, so our next grouping would be these guys right here. You can see how prepared I am today. That's okay. I'd like to see you carry that one in the pocket like that. <laughs> so, these are some designs that we've come out this year that we kind of group these together because there there's some things that are a bit new, a bit fun, a bit different. Um, so I want to start out real quick with something we haven't done in a while. Um, for those of you out there who have been Kershaw fans for a while, you might remember the Ram, uh, Model 1910. And uh, that was a design by Grant and Gavin Hawk that we did back in the day, and it featured the Hawk Lock. And we haven't really done anything with the Hawk Lock in a while. So this time around, we said, we said to Grant and Gavin, hey, we'd like to use a, d a design of ours, and we want to use your lock in it, and kind of combine our forces here. So with our powers combined, We've come up with this new knife. This here is called the induction. Um, so again, first obvious thing is it's featuring the hawk lock. So no liners, no side load on that blade. And the first thing you notice about it is even though it's a manual, it's really smooth, opens really fast. You can feel that action, Stu. I, and, and Jim, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit awestruck. I don't know how well it's coming out on video. But I'm a bit awestruck by the the striking appearance of this blade, with the the polished flat up here, and then the more subdued, uh, darker uh, grinds. It, it it comes out, and it's almost like a, it reminds me of a tuxedo. Yeah. You know, I you know, and, and I feel free so... to use feel free to use that name, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really does. And you're right about the action on this, even though it's completely manual. There's no assist. Is there? There's no assist in this. It doesn't feel no. like it. Nope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is just absolutely smooth. Yeah. And like you said, there's no load on the side of the blade at any point. Yep. And locking mechanism is all in here. Yep. Just above, just well, to the side of the pivot point. Am I correct? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So. Uh, so a couple things about this knife real quick. It has aluminum scales with a nice with a nice contouring to them. Um, obviously the, the Grant and Gavin Hawk designed Hawk Lock mechanism. Um, we have an injection molded insert here that has a faux G10 texture, so this will keep the whole mechanism inside. Um, and again, a full aluminum scale on the back with a nice black anodized finish. Reversible pocket clip, HCR 13 MOV blade and an MSRP of $59.99. So, once again, a knife with some real nice custom feel to it, but really reasonable price point. Something you can carry every day. Beautiful. So, with the ones that I did shoot uh, for Gerber, those were... So next up, we've got something that's a bit of a beast. We call this knife the payload. Payload? The payload, yep, model 1925. So this is in the, kind of in the vein of the way we tend to do knives with tools in them. We as a company like to make a knife that's a knife first and tool secondary. So the payload has a nice big usable blade. It's got a big comfortable handle that's really quite nice to hold. Um, 
Big oversized pivot hardware. Real beefy feel to it. Big beefy pocket clip. Again, that's kind of the theme on this knife is beefy. But then the real the real star of this knife is the new is the new uh, driver mechanism. And that pops right at the back end of the knife. An automatic. Yep. So that is spring loaded, shoots out the back automatically, locks into position. So real comfortable, easy to use. Um, we also, in, a, in kind of simplifying this, we've made it so the bits travel right in the handle. The driver bits just slide right out. So we have these nice injection molded handles with a fine texture on them. And the steel liners underneath create a little bit of a detent that holds these in. Okay, I was going to ask you if there's any type of a spring load on the side of that uh, uh, that slot, but yeah, there is. The, but there it's is. from underneath, correct? It's coming from underneath. Yep, and that's they've got a nice ramp, so it, it's again, it's it's hard to picture, but I mean they just slide right out of there easily. It's not awkward to get them. <clears throat> so you, this this knife ends up coming with three Phillips bits and two flathead bits, and then when you're done using that to release it you simply press the same button slide it back in and it locks in place so really cool new knife msrp of 49.99 on this one 49.99 yep and i just wanted to try out the locking mechanism on these bits and jim is uh, absolutely correct they just kind of slide right in and out i i don't just i don't perceive looking at the inside where the, the spring is, there's like a little spring arm. I don't perceive that being an issue with uh, a lot of wear no. or... No, no worse than your liners. Yeah, yeah. We're actually gonna make it a little stronger on the uh, on the full production ones. The, on the this spring? is production, we're just gonna, we're gonna have them bump it up just a little bit. Sure, but I'm, I'm trying to get that to bounce out. You know, just, okay, well I was You'll able to get there. something to bounce out, but that may yeah. have been my knuckle brushing yeah. against the other side. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll just do that one more time. Just a little bit of bouncing. You see that those driver, those the bits, not the drivers, the bits have not moved forward at all. Look, at, I'll be the guy to break the glass, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, those are not moving out at all. You know, so if you were to drop this, okay, there they moved, just one moved a little bit. One of the four moved a little bit, and I, I was tapping it considerably harder than I was earlier. Yeah. So, and, and the plan is possibly to even increase the uh, strength there's, of the There's going to be a little more preload on them, but it's still because of that ramp, they'll still slide out oh, real nice. Yeah, and they slide out just really nice and smooth. Yep. So that's the new payload. <laughs> Next, we have a knife called the Decoy. This one's, again, kind of an interesting departure. So we have something that's kind of like a friction folder with this, with this, big, this big arm on here. You pull that, it snaps open, and you have a liner lock. So, like a friction folder, except it actually does lock in place. Once you have it open, you have this nice utilitarian Warncliffe blade, right? With a nice, with a nice linear edge there, so you can not only use it for opening boxes, cutting cardboard, but you can really use this for fine dicing kind of things. Um, really convenient blade shape. Um, I like the star pattern on the pivot. Yeah. A little, little bit of a two-tone there again to give it a little bit of class. Right. <clears throat> we have a, a nice textured molded handle. And what's a little hard to see in the video here is this is actually a rubberized insert. So you get a lot of grip on that knife. May I? Yeah, please. Oh, yeah. And it's noticeably different between the this part of the scale or this part of the handle. You know, like people call it different things. And then that <laughs> insert. You, you definitely feel a different, in, a different, a different texture as you move your your digit across that. Yep. I like how I said that the digit. Yep. I'm being all technical. Yep. And the back spacer will be. Uh, is it? Is this uh, once again uh, 3D printed or? No. Th this is the actual back spacer. This is that's, the actual back spacer. Part, so. And that's kind of a nice highlight. You've got that that bright green, yeah. um, almost not quite a neon, but almost a neon yeah. green. Uh, kind of highlight this, this small working yep. knife. You know, you drop it, you're going to find it pretty darn easily. Yep. And we have the same texture on the on the inserts that we do on the backspacer. We're calling that a we're calling that a party bubble texture. Party bubble texture. Okay. And even though that's hard, it's not the not the not the same yeah. material as the insert. But, it, but it's got it, you, you've got the flow sure. of of the uh, the pattern. Yeah, very consistent. So then, the big feature, the actual little elephant in the room on this knife is this big opening in the back. So what that's actually for is, this, is a little integrated set of pincers, kind of like a hemostat. You slide out and they lock in place. So they actually 
lock themselves shut once you get them all the way out. If so, you've got to work on something and, and you need to get a hold of it, you can just slide that out, pinch it in, like you said, just like, well, it is a, it is a hemostat. I yeah. mean, it, you know, maybe not medically, but... Uh, I mean, I keep thinking, like, when I, I tend to be, I tend to work on wiring on my electric guitar, so, you know, having something like this to be able to just grip two wires while I'm soldering together would be real handy. We also have been thinking of it as an alternative carry, so you know, if you were to stick it on see your backpack or my badge here, you can get that to get that to clip on. It's another way to bring the knife around with you. Right. And may I? I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, tug on it. See if it's, it's gonna slide off oh, this. It did. Bit. But still, if you just had to put it into place for just yeah. a few moments, you know, you free up that hand. You, you pull, go ahead and hold your badge carrier over. So you're working with this. You slide yeah. it up. You just put it into place. Hold it. Yeah. Well, put it's it right. into place. Hold it. It's, yeah, a little further, but well, that's yeah, right. a little further. But yeah, you want to get a better grip on it. But uh, and, and now you're back to two hands, and then you reach up, and if you had to pull it away, it's going to slip right off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the other great thing about this knife is it's a very economical knife. It's very affordable. So an MSRP of twenty four ninety nine. Twenty five dollars for this knife. <laughs> that's 20, correct. Wait a minute. That's MSRP for this knife. That's correct. Wow. Yeah. You could buy three of them and have two as backups. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm going to lose that in the field. I, trust me. <laughs> Beautiful, Jim. What do we have next? Okay. So the last one, it's a fairly simple product, but... And I think it was just referred to as just a... I won't say... Just a spoon. <laughs> well, it's a little more than a spoon, but yeah, I mean, this is something that um, we've wanted to do for a while. Fun, simple camp tool. <clears throat> So, you know, we've, we've, people have been doing different camp tools out there on the market, and we, we had some ideas for how we wanted to work it out. So, we made it so you've got a real nice, usable spoon, comfortable grip for your hand here, and the whole thing has kind of a nice S-curve shape to it. Now, that's for comfort of design and also for actually the way it functions. So, you hold that in your utilitarian hand. use, and we've used a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of, well, typically uh, referred to as a sport, You've right. taken a spork, and, and, and this is this type of a device, this type of a, a camping tool, a utilitarian feeding tool, let's call it a feeding tool, eating yep. tool, has, has morphed from the spork to a short spork to a spork with another clip, and, and there's right. been a lot of uh, uh, generations of this. And yeah. you've got everything in one small package. It's no more than about three to three and a half inches long, I believe. Yep, it's, it's just about four inches, actually. Almost four? Okay. Yeah. And you've so got just a clip big enough to be usable, right? And big, and it's got a clip, and it's got a bottle opener on uh, a it cap lifter as well. Yep, that's correct. Because we <clears throat> we looked at this and we said, well, we want a good spoon, and again, you have to have that angle right. You don't want something just perfectly flat. Um, and, and in this case, when we were designing, we said, you know, we really want a real fork. We don't want to be fighting with quarter-inch long spork teeth, so we put a real fork on the back of it to make it a little more usable. Um, we and I got to say, nobody's been nobody that I. <laughs> I'm familiar with has been really happy with a spork combination. I mean, if you have to use it because it just happens to be what you've got, that's great. But no one is truly completely satisfied with the spork in one. Well, I mean, to each his own. I mean, I, it was just something that we felt like we felt like we could build a better mousetrap by using a real fork on it. So that was our opinion. Everybody's got their own, but that was how we were looking at it. Um, but when you when you flip it over again, that nice S curve makes it really usable. It's really comfortable. What's and then, the material on this? Um, this is 3CR13. So the other great thing about this is it's a really affordable MSRP. MSRP is $7.50. $7.50 USD yeah. for this. So I realize I'm biased, but when you yeah. really get down to street price, I mean, it's the kind of thing I, I I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, I, that's about the same price as a plastic sport, for God's yeah. sake. Now, yeah. any possibility of this being made in titanium or some other more exotic material? At this point, there's not a plan for that. Okay, I'll that. Never say never. Yeah, never say never. If you if you decide to just do a one-off, just send it to me. Okay, of course. Right? <laughs> <laughs> write that down. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Well. This Other the, than that, so oh, this is the lineup for 2016. It is, yep. And just so, just so those fans out there know, this is the Model 1140. It's called the Ration. Ration. Like, like your K rations in the military. Yep. Not anymore, thankfully, but. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure there's a few of you out there that remember those with not such great fondness. Uh, from what I understand, they still crop up from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> 
or at least the uh, canned coffee. I, yeah. I, and I don't want to go into that. You might as well <laughs> use it as a lubricant. Okay, well, very good. Okay, so that's the ration. Yep. And uh, Jim, I, I can't uh, thank you enough for the extra time that you gave us, and, uh, and it was really great to see you again, brother. Good to see you're still kicking and alive. <laughs> still sporting the, uh, the great beard. And you gotta tell me the magical trick on the shirt again. I mean, the shirt and tie thing, you know, just to switch out like that, I, you know, <laughs> if I could do it, it'd be great. It's not very often I get a wardrobe change in the video, so <laughs> you've been really accommodating. I try.